Hey farmling type people, B.O.B. here with a quick review of how to use the game settings feature in FS19 dashboard. In order to get to this screen you can access it from the menu anywhere in the game or it'll be available off the menu in the splash screen when you first start the game. Alright, first up on the options here is the change menu, music, and background. Now, I've already done a video on this. shows you exactly how to use it. And uh, a link to that video will be in the description below. And uh, also it'll suggest the video at the end of this video. The next option is delete the shader cache. Now, the shader cache is where the, the game stores its cache files for shaders, which have to do with textures inside the game. And uh, sometimes the textures won't display properly while you're playing the game, for whatever reason that I'm not aware. But it's every now and again, it just seems like it corrupts these files in this uh, shader cache. And... Uh, by deleting those files you're forcing the game to create new ones and um, it kind of gives you a fresh start and a lot of times it does eliminate the errors or the uh, display errors in in the game as far as textures go so that's uh, I would keep this as a last resort because on some computer systems the game's going to be a little laggy until it builds that cache so after you d delete the cache folder and the files in it, uh, I would recommend running the game and then just moving around inside the map for a while so that the, the game can build that cache back up and everything should go a little smoother after that. Next we have the Developer's Console. Developer's Console probably isn't for most people but it uh, gives you access to what's going on behind the scenes in the game. It'll let you uh, uh, view the log file in real time and it'll display uh, the FPS on your screen while you're playing to give you an idea what the FPS is. I, I think uh, once the developer's console is enabled it's F2 to display the FPS. Um, see the game documentations if you need to know more. Uh, like I said, most of you won't even really need this feature in the game. Next, error logging. While you're playing the game and, and it's loading mods and if any kind of errors or warnings that the game comes across may not be apparent to you while you're playing but they're not good to have so the game will write any of these errors or warnings to a log file as it goes along so um, having this set to true is a plus I think is by default it's set to true so you shouldn't really have to do anything but by selecting this feature here it, it'll check for you and tell you whether it's uh, enabled or not um, if it's not it, it'll say false if you want to enable it click true and then save error logging status and you're good to go and then you have a, a quick link down here that will open the game log file in notepad if that's the way that you want to look at it um, I would recommend using Log Viewer, which I will do a video on soon. The last option is Gamepad. If you're using any kind of uh, controller, you'll need to enable this and set it to True. I honestly can't remember whether it's set to True by default. I think it is. But if you're going to use a steering wheel or a side panel, or, or a gear shift or any kind of uh, peripherals like that in the game you'll have to uh, enable this feature 
and um, then the game will recognize it. And it's it, it's been tested with me by the uh, Logitech Heavy Equipment Bundle, which I have a link to Amazon right here. If uh, if you're interested in a a nice set of controllers for the game with a steering wheel and brake pedals and uh, this uh, bundle includes the side panel as well which is really handy to have. Click this link it'll fire up your default browser and take you to Amazon and I will receive a small commission should you decide to purchase the bundle. Okay folks that's it for today I will continue to put out videos on uh, how to use all the features since that's been requested by a lot of people. And uh, thanks for watching.